I have heard that on one occasion, the Blessed One, on a wandering tour among the Kosalands with a large community of monks, arrived at Kesaputa, a town of the Kalamas. The Kalamas of Kesaputa heard it said, Gotama, the contemplative, the son of the Sakyans, having gone forth from the Sakyan clan, has arrived at Kesaputa. And of that Master Gotama, this fine reputation has spread. He is indeed a blessed one, worthy and rightly self-awakened consummate in knowledge and conduct, well gone, a knower of the cosmos, an unexcelled trainer of those persons ready to be tamed, teacher of human and divine beings, awakened, blessed. He has made known having realized it through direct knowledge, this world with its devas, maras and brahmas, its generations with their contemplatives and brahmans, their rulers and common people, has explained the dharma admirable in the beginning, admirable in the middle, admirable in the end has expounded the holy life, both in its particulars and in its essence. Entirely perfect, surpassingly pure. It is good to see such a worthy one. So the Kalamas of Kesaputa went to the Blessed One, on arrival, some of them bowed down to him and sat to one side. Some of them exchanged courteous greetings with him, and after an exchange of friendly greetings and courtesies, sat to one side. Some of them sat to one side, having saluted him with their hands, palm to palm, over their hearts. Some of them sat to one side, having announced their name and clan. Some of them sat to one side in silence. As they sat there, the Kalamas of Kesaputa said to the Blessed One, Lord, there are some Brahmins and contemplatives who come to Kesaputa. They expound and glorify their own doctrines. But as for the doctrines of others, they deprecate them, revile them, show contempt for them, and disparage them. And then other Brahmins and contemplatives come to Kesaputta. They expound and glorify their own doctrines. But as for the doctrines of others, they deprecate them, revile them, show contempt for them, and disparage them. They leave us absolutely uncertain and in doubt. Which of these venerable Brahmins and contemplatives are speaking the truth? And which ones are lying? Of course you are uncertain, Kalamas. Of course you are in doubt. When there are reasons for doubt, uncertainty is born. So in this case, Kalamas, don't go by reports, by legends, by traditions, by scripture by logical conjecture, by inference, by analogies, 
by agreement through pondering views, by probability, or by the thought. This contemplative is our teacher. When you know for yourself that these qualities are unskillful, these qualities are blameworthy, these qualities are criticised by the wise, these qualities, when adopted and carried out, lead to harm and to suffering, then you should abandon them. What do you think, Kalamas? When greed arises in a person, does it arise for welfare or for harm? For harm, Lord. And this greedy person, overcome by greed, their mind possessed by greed, kills living beings, takes what is not given, goes after another person's partner, tells lies, and induces others to likewise. All of which is for long-term harm and suffering. Yes, Lord. Now what do you think, Kalamas? When aversion arises in a person, does it arise for welfare or for harm? For harm, Lord. And this aversive person, overcome by aversion, their mind possessed by aversion, kills living beings, takes what is not given, goes after another person's partner, tells lies, and induces others to do likewise, all of which is for long-term harm and suffering. Yes, Lord. Now what do you think, Kalamas? When delusion arises in a person, does it arise for welfare or for harm? For harm, Lord. And this deluded person, overcome by delusion, their mind possessed by delusion, kills living beings, takes what is not given, goes after another person's partner, tells lies, and induces others to do likewise, all of which is for long-term harm and suffering. Yes, Lord. So what do you think, Kalamas? Are these qualities skillful or unskillful? Unskillful, Lord. Blameworthy or blameless? Blameworthy, Lord. Criticised by the wise or praised by the wise? Criticised by the wise, Lord. When adopted and carried out, do they lead to harm and to suffering or not? When adopted and carried out, they lead to harm and to suffering. That is how it appears to us. So, as I said, Kalamas, don't go by reports, by legends, by traditions, by scripture, by logical conjecture by inference, by analogies, by agreement through pondering views, 
by probability or by the thought, this contemplative is our teacher. When you know for yourselves that these qualities are unskillful, these qualities are blameworthy, these qualities are criticized by the wise, these qualities, when adopted and carried out, lead to harm and to suffering, then you should abandon them. But when you know for yourselves that these qualities are skillful, these qualities are blameless, these qualities are praised by the wise, these qualities, when adopted and carried out, lead to welfare and to happiness. Then you should enter and remain in them. What do you think, Kalamas, when a lack of greed arises in a person? When a lack of aversion arises in a person? When a lack of delusion arises in a person, does it arise for welfare or for harm? For welfare, Lord. And this ungreedy, unaversive, and undeluded person, not overcome by greed, hatred, or delusion, their mind not possessed by any of them, doesn't kill living beings, doesn't take what is not given, doesn't go after another person's partner, tell lies, or induce others to do likewise, all of which is for long-term welfare and happiness. Yes, Lord. So what do you think, Kalamas? Are these qualities skillful or unskillful? Skillful, Lord. Blameworthy or blameless? Blameless, Lord. Criticized by the wise or praised by the wise? Praised by the wise Lord. When adopted and carried out, do they lead to welfare and to happiness or not? They lead to welfare and to happiness, Lord. That is how it appears to us. Now, Kalamas, one who is a disciple of the Noble Ones, thus devoid of greed, devoid of ill will, undeluded, alert and resolute, keeps pervading the first direction as well as the second direction, the third and the fourth with an awareness imbued with goodwill. Thus they keep pervading above, below, and all around, everywhere, and in every respect, the all-encompassing cosmos, with an awareness imbued with goodwill, abundant, expansive, immeasurable, free from hostility, free from ill will. They keep pervading the first direction, as well as the second, the third, and the fourth, 
with an awareness imbued with compassion. Thus they keep pervading above, below, all around, everywhere, and in every respect, the all-encompassing cosmos with an awareness imbued with compassion. Abundant, expansive, immeasurable, free from hostility, free from ill will, They keep pervading the first direction, as well as the second direction, the third and the fourth, with an awareness imbued with sympathetic joy. Thus they keep pervading above, below, and all around, everywhere and in every respect the all-encompassing cosmos with an awareness imbued with sympathetic joy. Abundant, expansive, immeasurable, free from hostility, free from ill will, They keep pervading the first direction, as well as the second direction, the third and the fourth, with an awareness imbued with equanimity. Thus they keep pervading above, below, and all around everywhere and in every respect, the all-encompassing cosmos, with an awareness imbued with equanimity. Abundant, expansive, immeasurable, free from hostility, free from ill will. Now Kalamas, one who is a disciple of the Noble Ones, their mind thus free from hostility, free from ill will, undefiled and pure, acquires four assurances in the here and now. If there is a world after death, if there is the fruit of actions rightly and wrongly done, then this is the basis by which, with the breakup of the body after death, I will reappear in a good destination, the heavenly world. This is the first assurance they acquire. But if there is no world after death, if there is no fruit of actions rightly and wrongly done, then here in the present life I look after myself with ease, free from hostility, free from ill will, free from trouble. This is the second assurance they acquire. If evil is done through acting, still I have willed no evil for anyone. Having done no evil action, from where will suffering touch me? This is the third assurance they acquire.
but if no evil is done through acting, then I can assume myself pure in both respects. This is the fourth assurance they acquire. One who is a disciple of the Noble Ones, their mind thus free from hostility, free from ill will, undefiled and pure, acquires these four assurances in the here and now. Magnificent Lord, Magnificent. Just as if he were to place upright what was overturned, to reveal what was hidden, to show the way to one who was lost, or to carry a lamp into the dark so that those with eyes could see forms. In the same way has the Blessed One, through many lines of reasoning, made the Dharma clear. We go to the Blessed One for refuge, to the Dharma and to the Sangha. May the Blessed One remember us as lay followers who have gone forth to him for refuge from this day forward for life.